Becoming a pilot is one of the most rewarding things you will ever do, and it will open up a new world of wonderful experiences. However, everything worth doing has some challenges, and I've heard from a few of my local students and from several of you through email that you might be struggling. While there are no silver bullets, here are six things I've learned that I believe would have made my journey less stressful. Hopefully, they'll be helpful to you. Let me start with a question. If you ask someone that knows you really well, would they say you're good at planning? There's a fair amount of research that shows that most people are not as good as they believe. While occasionally things go as planned, the majority of the time they don't. This is why my wife rightfully teases me about always being home late from a lesson or a trip. This happens because we don't know and we can't control all of the variables. Things like weather, maintenance issues, needing to work around other people's schedules, they can all get in the way of completing things as planned. Because of that, I've learned it is better to try and plan pessimistically and be pleasantly surprised than plan optimistically and be unpleasantly surprised. Here's a related question. How long do you think it will take to earn your private pilot certificate? The FAA requires 40 hours of preparation and many pilot candidates measure themselves against that 40 hour metric, but 40 hours is the bare minimum. In the USA, the average time it takes for someone to complete their training is between 65 and 70 hours, almost two times the FAA minimums. The actual amount of time it will take will depend on a lot of factors, including your ability to absorb information, your ability to accept and act on feedback, how frequently you can train, the complexity of the airspace you're training in, the complexity of your aircraft, the experience of your instructor, and much, much more. It took me 70 hours to prepare for my private pilot check ride, and to be honest, there were several times during that final 30 hours when I was unfairly questioning my abilities. Why was it taking me so long? And you know what? It wasn't helpful. In fact, I now know that worrying actually increased the time that it should have taken. So the second thing I wish I knew is to spend less time worrying about how long training is taking and more time focusing on the journey. Third, you may have heard that aviation cliche that it only takes two things to fly, air, speed, and money. Well, well, it's meant as a joke, but there's a heavy dose of reality behind it. In fact, financial constraints are one of the most frequently mentioned reasons for not completing flight training. But there are things that you can do about it. First, be realistic about how much it's going to cost. The costs of flight training can vary significantly across the country, so it might be hard to come up with an estimate. Most flight schools offer a some kind of cost estimate, and some are really good, but others tend to lean towards the optimistic side. If you're interested, I've put a link in the comments section to a spreadsheet that can help you create a more realistic estimate. Second, put together a plan about how you're going to come up with the money. Ask yourself the following questions, and be honest with the answers. First, do you really have the money in the bank? If not, how much more do you need? Second, are you eligible for grants and scholarships? Can you work full or part-time while training? Are there other expenses that you're willing and able to drop in order to fly? And finally, do you have family willing to help? Third, have a significant amount of the estimated money available before you begin training. The amount you should have on hand depends on your current situation. The slower you're able to accumulate money, the more you should put away before starting. Why? Well, because running out of money sucks. It never happens at a good time, it takes your focus off the training materials, and it often stops your training cold, and gaps in your training are not only frustrating, they make your training take longer, and therefore make it more expensive. A couple of quick notes. First, there's a, a lot of discussion on the web about the dangers or the benefits of taking out loans for flight training. If you're considering this, I would urge caution. I've seen many instances where the loans worked well for candidates training to change careers. In these cases, the cost of the loan was an investment against future earning potential. They carefully weighed the pros and cons, and for them, it made sense. I've also seen individuals get themselves into trouble by borrowing money for recreational training or because they didn't carefully read or consider the terms. Therefore, my recommendation would be to consider loans as a last option and suggest that you do your homework very carefully before finalizing any agreements. To wrap up this item, I want to point out one more thing. And that is that having a plan doesn't guarantee you won't run out of money, but it definitely lessens the likelihood. Fourth for me was the realization that I was really going to have to work hard for my certificates. When I started out, I had no idea how much I'd need to study and practice to become a pilot. It was daunting. To make things worse, I realized that studying and practice wouldn't stop once I became a pilot. 
regulations change, equipment changes, and you don't always use all the skills regularly. So to remain competent and safe, you essentially need to re-earn your certificate every 24 months. Because of this, you need to get comfortable studying. Really dig in when there's something you don't understand. Uh, consider it a puzzle and reward yourself when you figure it out. You know, once you get into the habit of studying, it becomes a lot easier, and at that point, it even becomes enjoyable. Along the same lines was the realization that flight training is a bit art, and a bit science, and a bit athletics. You need to learn math, physics, aviation law, regulations, geography, meteorology, and, and risk management. And then you need to blend them together to safely and professionally pilot an aircraft. The variety of knowledge, risk, and skill elements required make flight training very challenging. There are things you're going to pick up easily, but there are other things that will be really hard. And the reality is that there will be at least one time when you've had it and you're ready to quit. I call this the pit of despair. And if it happens to you, remember two things. First, you're not alone. It happens to a lot of pilot candidates. It's happened to me more than once. And chances are, it's even happened to your instructor. So, don't be afraid to talk with others about it. Secondly, you can get through it. It may take additional work and maybe some extra help, but if you persevere, you will get through it. And you will be very proud of yourself because you did. Finally, taking a journey alone is usually not as fun as traveling with others. Flight training is exactly the same. Surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals will not only make things easier, but more enjoyable too. Joining an online group is a good start, but there's nothing quite like a local, in-person study group. These folks can make studying easier and more fun, give you a built-in group to bounce questions off of, hold you accountable and challenge you to try harder and be better, help you through the tough times like the pit of despair, and last but not least, they can and will celebrate with you during each victory along the way. So there you have it. Six things I wish I knew before I started flight training. Hopefully, Knowing them will help make your journey just a little bit more predictable and a little less stressful. Do you have others you'd like to add to the list? If so, please put them in the comments section. If this was helpful, please watch the next video. And as always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.